Newt Knight was a poor dirt farmer. He deserted the Confederate Army and led other deserters in Jones County, often referred to as the Free State of Jones. But was Captain Knight a scoundrel or a hero? Well, can we say he's a badass? Naturally, being associated with this house, we consider him a murderer. Two widely different opinions about the same man. I think one reason that Newt Knight lives on is because there's really not a definite answer as to who he, who he really was. But why the divide? Let's start with the decent home in Ellisville in 1863. I mean, he came in this house uh, uninvited and he shot a man in cold blood. That man was Confederate Major Amos McLemore. And the story is that Newt Knight tried to get a clean shot through the windows, but could not get just McLemore. He was afraid he would hit someone else. So he came back around on the porch, threw the door open, and shot Major McLemore. McLemore fell right down on the floor here. But one historian says it's misleading to say Knight murdered McLemore in cold blood. Major McLemore was not down here to sell Girl Scout cookies. You know, he was in Jones County to round up deserters. You know, and of course, what was he going to do with some of those deserters if he caught them? They would have been hung. Wyatt Moulds is a retired history professor, a consultant on the movie, and a distant cousin of Newt Knight. He did not want to take part in a war that was being fought to protect the property rights, the slave property rights of rich people. We're all out there dying so they can stay rich. Knight and other deserters felt it was a rich man's war and a poor man's fight. They were traitors in the eyes of the Confederacy. But historians say Knight didn't care, and he played by his own rules in every way. So he, he had two wives. You know, his white wife was Serena. His black wife was Rachel. He had children with um, uh, two different families, and no multiracial families at that time were, were not you know, was not really favorably looked on at all in Mississippi. Terrica Knight is a descendant of Newt Knight. She works at a country store in Jones County. I have, I've had someone to come in and he's like, how do you feel about Matthew McConaughey playing your grandpappy? And I'm just like, who does that? Knight says she has already experienced racial tension for being a descendant. The only thing I'm I really want out of the movie is for the black knights and the white knights to come together as one because there's no need in the, I mean, all that's back in the past. Slavery days are over. Newt Knight died in 1922, and according to his gravestone here in Jasper County, he lived to be 92 years old, and he had a request to be buried in a pine box tilted slightly up so that he's always on guard. And in his final act of defiance, he's buried in the same cemetery as his black wife, Rachel. Well, in 1922, you know, it was against the law for whites and African Americans to be buried in the same cemetery. So, you know, this is the age of Jim Crow in all its glory. Meanwhile, his white wife, Serena, is buried in Laurel, several miles away from Newt and Rachel. She died in 1923. I assume this was her church. So who was Newt Knight, an unconventional hero who fought for other poor farmers, or an adulterer who got away with murder and left one family for another? Everything that was written about him, um, uh, talks about him um, in both ways, and both of those sources are, are pretty credible. It just don't really how, you know, whose side you want to believe. In Jones and Jasper Counties, Keegan Fox, 16 WAPT News.